Chapter 24 Death of Christ As he yielded up his life, Christ did not feel triumphant joy. Anguish tore his heart apart, and gloom oppressed him. But it was not the fear or the pain of death that caused his suffering. It was the crushing weight of the world's sin and a sense of separation from his Father's love. This was what broke the Savior's heart and resulted in his quick death. Christ endured the agony that sinners will feel when they awake from death to realize the burden of their guilt, to know that they have forever separated themselves from the joy and peace of heaven. Angels watched with amazement the despair that filled the Son of God. His mental anguish was so intense that he hardly felt the pain of the cross. Nature itself expressed its sympathy with Christ. The sun had shone clearly until midday, when suddenly it seemed to be blotted out. All about the cross hung a darkness as deep as the blackest midnight. This supernatural darkness lasted fully three hours. A nameless terror seized the mob. Their cursing and insults ceased. Men, women, and children fell upon the earth in total terror. Lightning occasionally flashed forth from the cloud, revealing the cross and the crucified Redeemer. All thought that their time of punishment had come. At the ninth hour, the darkness lifted from the people, but it still wrapped the Savior like a cloak. The lightning seemed to hurl itself at him as he hung upon the cross. It was then that he exclaimed, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Matthew 27, 46, Mark 15, 34. In the meantime, the darkness had settled over Jerusalem and the plains of Judea. As all eyes gazed in the direction of the fated city, they saw the fierce lightning flashes of God's wrath directed toward it. Suddenly the gloom lifted from the cross, and in clear trumpet-like tones that seemed to resound throughout creation, Jesus cried, It is finished! John 19.30 Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Luke 23.46 A light encircled the cross, and the face of the Savior shone with a glory like that of the sun. He then bowed his head upon his breast and died. The crowd about the cross stood paralyzed. Holding their breath, they gazed upon the Savior. Again, darkness settled upon the earth. People heard a hoarse rumbling like heavy thunder. A violent earthquake shook the ground. The earthquake knocked the people down in heaps. Confusion and terror filled everyone. In the surrounding mountains, rocks crashed down into the plains below. Tombs broke open, throwing many bodies out. Creation seemed to be shattering into atoms. Priests, rulers, soldiers, and people, mute with terror, sprawled upon the ground. At the time of the death of Christ, some of the priests were serving in the temple at Jerusalem. They felt the shock of the earthquake. Just at that same moment, the veil of the temple separating the holy from the most holy place ripped from top to bottom. The same hand that had written the words of doom upon the walls of Belshazzar's palace now tore the curtain. The most holy place of the earthly sanctuary was no longer sacred. Never again would the presence of God overshadow that mercy seat. Never again would God show his acceptance or displeasure by the light or shadow in the precious stones in the breastplate of the high priest. From now on, the blood of the offerings in the temple had no value. The Lamb of God, in dying, had become the sacrifice for the sins of the world. When Christ died upon the cross of Calvary, his death threw open a new and living way for both Jew and Gentile alike. Angels rejoiced as the Savior cried, It is finished! The great plan of redemption was to be carried out. Through a life of obedience, the sons of Adam might be exalted finally to the presence of God. Satan was defeated and knew that his kingdom was lost.